So if you're working on a project like this, I'd be willing to bet that you are possibly at the point where you've got buckets or bags or boxes full of rusty bolts that look terrible. But if you're like me and you're a tight ass, you don't want to go and buy new hardware. So we're going to have a crack at uh, restoring some old stuff and making it goodish as new. Let's see what we can do. Oh, come on. So let's presume that you've got all your fasteners kind of organized into roughly where they came from. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is clean them up, make them look as clean as possible. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. So the first one's going to be the blast cabinet. Now, it's effective. It works really quickly. Not everybody has one. Not everybody wants to get one. The next option we have is the, uh, the old bench grinder with the wire wheel. Again, very effective. Not everybody has one. Not everybody wants to use one, and it has a habit of grabbing the part out of your hand and firing it across the room. Third thing we can do is drill brush, which is okay. Uh, a little fiddly, very finicky, and I'm not a huge fan, but it'll work. And then our fourth is uh, chemical stripping, which is probably what we're going to do. We'll use a combination of chemical stripping and drill brush. Okay, now we're gonna get into the science and stuff. What you're gonna need? Cleaning vinegar, all white vinegar, cooking salt, plain table salt, power supply. This is an old phone charger or radio charger or something. Doesn't really matter so long as it is less than about an amp. Let's not go crazy, we're not trying to blow stuff up. An anode of some description. This is a nickel anode. If you want to know where to get it from, uh, I will leave some links, but eBay, Amazon, Timu? I don't know. Don't do what I did and buy a one mil thick anode. It's really hard to cut and you do need to cut it. Copper wire, uh, solid is better, but stranded will work. A couple of containers, uh, preferably sealable because once you make up the solution, you can keep it. You can reuse it as many times as you need. So we're gonna start with the nickel because the hardest one to get wrong. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our anode into strips about this much, I guess. Doesn't really matter, uh, especially if you're using a, an anode as thick as this. So you will need two strips of anode for about 10 mil. The main thing is that you can bend them on the ends to hang over the containers, which we'll do next. Right, we're going to take one of our containers. We're going to take our vinegar. Make sure the container is clean. I feel like that goes without saying, but I also feel like people will get that wrong. I'm going to fill it about three quarters of the way with vinegar. And we're going to hang our anodes on either side, like that. All right, now we're going to mix in about a tablespoon of salt. I don't know how much a tablespoon is, we're just going to we're going to make it with our heart here. Sure, <laughs> about that much. That much is good. And we're going to give it a mix. The salt itself is just to try and increase the amount of current in the water. You can actually, in theory, do it without the salt. It just takes forever. Now we're going to connect our power. So, don't plug the power in until you've got everything connected. Okay, everything's connected, everything looks good. So then we're going to plug in our power. The negative side should start to bubble pretty much instantly. Something like that. Now make sure you mark which side is your negative side because uh, you will need to know that later. So now he's got to let that go for like two hours until it starts to turn green. Mm. Forbidden Gatorade, good. While this is setting up doing its thing, we can start doing part prep. You don't have to do this step, but I like to just give everything a quick dunk in hydrochloric acid. Now, what this will do is it will actually clean the part, so you can see that these parts that we've sandblasted have already started to flash rust a little bit. Uh, so it'll take that off and it'll give them a nice etched surface to, um, to plate to. 
you know, this stuff is dangerous, be very careful with it. If you need to know where to get it, it's from your local hardware stores, pool supplies, any of that. All right, so we're gonna put about that much in a jar. We're going to take our piece of copper wire and we're gonna put a hook bend in the end of it. Just something nice and simple. We're going to throw our washer on. And we're just gonna dunk it in this acid for about a minute. Maybe two, depends how I'm feeling. All right, we're gonna let it do its thing. Now, goes without saying, make sure you do all this in a well-ventilated space. After a minute, you can see it's all nicely colored again. Give it a quick dip in our water just to neutralize it. We're going to disconnect our power. We're going to move our piece into here. We're going to connect our negative to the end of our copper wire and we're going to plug it back in you will see now that our washer should be in theory getting plated now if you want to make this more successful it's actually easier to put a second anode on the other side which i may even do depending on how this works out all right so i'll let that sit for half an hour an hour something like and uh, come back and see what it looks like. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes, so we're going to unplug this and see what we got. Okay, so we're gonna unhook it from our, you know, you can see that it's definitely plated the copper. And this is our piece. So this is what it looked like before it went in, and this is it now. Looks much better. Now I should probably give this a little bit longer, because uh, it's still got some quite heavy pitting and we would like to fill some of that in. I've also realized that this is a front bar washer, so nickel's probably not the best thing to do with this. So let's, uh, let's make some zinc, because that's what we need to use for all of our external parts. The process for zinc is very much the same as the process for nickel. We're going to do about the same amount of vinegar. We're going to take our much thinner zinc anode. Same kind of deal, just going to cut it into strips. A bit of salt. Let's not go as crazy as we did last time maybe. Mixy mixy, and our ends over. And same deal, power unplugged, this one on, power on. It'll start bubbling away. Now we're gonna have to do the same thing with this one, leave it sit for probably a couple of hours just to the solution to, uh, or the electrolyte solution to come good, and then we can start doing some zinc plating. Same kind of deal, I'm gonna give this a quick dunk. Make sure it's clean, make sure it looks good. Clean it, and then it's good to go. And we can pretty much do this with all of our prep parts. Much the same setup on this one as the other. We're gonna try a bolt this time, and we're gonna go zinc plating. As you can see, the zinc doesn't actually change color like the uh, nickel does. The reaction is more or less instantaneous. We'll see how that goes. Okay, apparently one of the inherent issues with using thin anodes is that uh, they eventually just wear away way too quickly. So that's probably something to note. But our piece is actually looking pretty good. Nice even zinc plate all around. I don't actually know how long it was on for because I left it for an hour, but uh, at whatever point that anode dissolved completely, uh, it would have stopped, obviously, conducting, but that's not bad. And it's just a quick comparison of uh, one that we took out versus what it looks like after it's been plated. That is actually pretty good. Now, I'm probably still going to paint at least you know, the head of the bolt, 
just to you know, make it look pretty. But by rights, if I go through and zinc plate all these, they should be much better protected. Now we've just got all those to go. Yay. Now doing these one by one is really time consuming. So I'm not going to show you doing every single one. But just so you get a basic idea, we'll give them a clean up, we give them a dunk, a wash off, and then back into the solution. So here's all our parts, freshly zinc plated. As you can see, there is a bit of variance in them. They're not perfectly coated. Uh, I've noticed anywhere where there is blemishes on the hardware, it will not adhere very well. So cleanliness is key. But overall, these are all, they all have a plating. They should all be better protected. Obviously, there's a few spots that need to be redone, but on the whole, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so there we have it. Is this the right way to do it? I don't know, I would assume not. Does it work? Sure. It's probably gonna give it better protection than we would have had anyway. So for uh, a cheap home job, it will do just fine. This cost, the whole lot here probably cost me somewhere in the realm of 30 to $50, depending on what you've got at home. Uh, obviously, this is not a professional plating video. Um, by rights, it's not even really a good plating video, but conceptually, it works. Um, if you guys are interested, we might look at getting a proper plating kit and doing the whole process with the, uh, the brighteners and the chromate and making some really like nice looking hardware. But for now, this will, uh, this will give them better protection than what they would have got from just paint. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see a proper setup done well, we can do that. Just uh, let me know in the comments. If you've got any questions or queries, make sure you, uh, you chuck them down in the comments as well. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it.